Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a GoFundMe Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it. A big shout out to the person that suggested this video, and a big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. So today, I'm going to be reacting to Mohammed S. Or was it supposed to be is but Muhammad in is in the previous scriptures so without wasting time let's get into the video <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who are successful that they are the ones who will follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom the unbelievers will find written in the Torah and the Injil. He commands them to do only what is good. He forbids them from doing only what is bad. He permits for them all the good things and he forbids from them all of the things that are unclean. And he removes the difficulties, the hardships that were upon them before. And so those who follow him, those who believe in him and help him and follow the light that is delivered with him, those are al-muflihun, those are the ones who are successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself indicates that the Prophet sallallahu is mentioned in the previous scriptures. We don't look into the previous scriptures for guidance. But since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indicated that we will find this final, last, powerful messenger that Allah sent to mankind, bringing the final way of life, that we will find him written in the Torah and the Injil, so we have scholars who have looked into those books. And when you find what is there, you in fact realize the entire thrust of the previous scriptures is foretelling the day when Allah would establish on this earth something called the kingdom of God on earth as it is referred to in the Bible a powerful prophet whom the Bible said would fight and defeat all of his enemies and would establish this powerful kingdom of God on earth he is referred to oftentimes as the messenger of the covenant when Allah made a covenant with Abraham the end result of this contract is that the whole world would be blessed through his descendants. And of course the blessing is guidance. And this powerful messenger of the covenant, says the previous scriptures, will bring this kingdom of God on earth, which is characterized by a few particular things. The kingdom of God on earth is established in the Holy Land, never to be removed. The kingdom of God on earth is characterized by the worship of the one God alone with no partners. This is what the Bible says. And the kingdom of God on earth is characterized by the first time that the unbelieving people will be brought into the law of God. As we know, Allah made a covenant with the children of Israel. And part of that covenant was that they would not hide what they were given, but that they would establish it and show it to the people and we know that over the centuries they failed to fulfill their task. But the people of the book have attempted in many, many ways to hide the true identity of that final messenger from Allah. And we know, of course, that final messenger is the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Allah says in the Quran, those to whom we have given the book know him. And the tafsir is a reference to the Prophet Wasallam. Know him, the Prophet. Wasallam, as they know their own children by his description they knew that Muhammad Wasallam, is that long awaited messenger but a party of them or a group of them hide the truth and they know they know what they're doing so for example we have written things in the, Quran, in the Bible things that have been written by people which attempt to mar this fact uh, Ismail, the son of 
Abraham, the first son of Abraham, is referred to in negative ways. A story is told that when Ismail was seven years old, Isaac was born. And when Ismail was 14 years old and Isaac was seven years old, Ismail was making fun of Isaac and Isaac's mother became upset and so she commanded Abraham to get rid of this this boy and his mother, Hajar. And so Abraham listened to his wife and he took them away and it's kind of a disgrace that here Ismail is being rejected. But the very same Bible, when you read the story, then what happens to Hagar or Hajar and Ismail is indicates that the previous story is wrong to what it says later on. Because here they are in the wilderness of Paran, as the Bible says. Abraham took Hagar and her son Ishmael to the wilderness of Paran, which we all know is Mecca. And the boy, Ishmael, was on the ground and he was kicking his feet out of thirst. And up from under his foot sprang a well of water. This is in the Bible. And an angel of the Lord came to Hagar and he said to her, Lift up the lad, for God will make of him a great nation. He doesn't mean numbers or wealth or military might. When he says a great nation, he means a believing nation. He was included in the covenant which Allah made with Abraham, although the Jews and Christians try to make it seem as if he's not. Well, the biblical narrative says that Ismail was 14 years old when Abraham took him and his mother to the wilderness of Paran. But the rest of the narrative, when they're in Paran, it says that he was on the ground kicking his feet out of thirst and up from his foot sprang a well of water. Well, would a 14-year-old boy be on the ground kicking because he was thirsty? Would an angel of the Lord come to his mother and say, lift the boy up, carry him, pick him up, if he was 14 years old? It belies the fact that there's a forgery going on here. And we know from the Quran that they have forged their books. The stories that they tell about the prophets, bad, horrible stories, things that they've done, major sins. These are all forgeries, which we know are not true. Woe to those who, have, who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, in order to purchase by it a miserable price. So the fact of the matter is that Ibrahim salam, took Hajar, and her son Ismail السلام, to this location before Isaac was even born. He was still a very young child, Ismail, and that's why he was kicking his feet. And that's why the angel told his mother to pick him up. And the reason Abraham took them to this location is because Allah intended to establish a covenant with Isaac here and with Ismail there. They were both included in the covenant. That's one. And the place that he took them, the Bible says, Paran, and the Jews and the Christians will pull out all the stops to try to say that Paran is some place, some location in the Sinai, and that Ismail is not related at all to the Arabs. The Arabs are not connected to Abraham. They will say all of this nonsense, even though Allah promised to make his you know, offspring great in number. And even the Bible speaks about his 12 sons, Ismail's 12 sons, and they are named in the Bible. Now we know from Arab history that there was a caravan that was coming north from Yemen and they saw birds circling over the valley of Mecca and they thought that was very odd because they knew this whole area was desolate. There was no water, there was no vegetation. So they, they understood from this, if birds are circling, that there must be water. And of course that water was the blessed spring of Zamzam, which came up from under the feet of Ismail. So they diverted the caravan and they came into this valley. And what did they find when they got there? They found a woman and her baby out in the middle of nowhere. So they thought these two people are runaways. And so they named the valley Farran, the two runaways. And the Bible refers to it as Paran. Even Paul of the New Testament, the man who caused the deviation of billions of people by writing his heresies, this man who was rebuked twice by the actual companions of Isa, they took him into the synagogue and they said, you have to stop 
saying and writing these things. This is bid'ah. It is heresy what you're saying. And he, they made him swear that he wouldn't. Even this man who was so deluded admits in the book of Galatians. He says Abraham had two sons. And so therefore two covenants from God. And Hagar is in Arabia because that is where the second Jerusalem is. And so many of the other prophets also made it clear. So Moses, alayhi salam, in the book of Deuteronomy, he goes and Allah is convening with him and speaking to him. And when he comes down from the mountain, he pronounces this great prophecy, which the Jews have never forgotten. He said, God says, I will raise from among their brethren a prophet like you. And I will put my words in his mouth. And it will come to pass that he shall speak all that I command him. And it will be that whoever does not hearken or obey the words that he will speak in my name, I will require it of him. Or I will be the avenger. I will insist upon it. This is a major prophecy, yes? And the Jews had never forgotten it. Of course, they refused to acknowledge the Prophet Wasallam when he came. Well, why were they actually in Arabia when the Prophet showed up? They were telling the Arabs, Al-Aws and Khazraj, that they were there awaiting that last great Prophet. In fact, that's the very reason why the people of Yathrib heard that there was a man claiming to be the Prophet of Allah. And they believed in him before even the Jews could. Yes? So the proof is right there. I only have one question before I continue with the rest of the video. Um... What do people lose out if Muhammad is in all scriptures? If Muhammad is in the Bible, if Muhammad is in the Torah or whatever religion you belong to. And if you know that he's mentioned either by other names, shortcuts, nickname, whatever it is, why push the that information aside? Don't you think you should look into it?